Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease. I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute for medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Thank you, Meredith, so much for being on the podcast today. I'm so grateful that you decided to come and share all of your great knowledge and information with my audience. And just thank you again for being here. Thank you. I'm glad to share with your audience and glad to be here and help add more perspectives today. Yes. (laughs) One of the really cool things that I get to do is just share different perspectives and help everyone as they're going through things to really and truly understand folks that are on the front lines, that are that have seen patients, that are working in their business to help folks. And I just want you to share a little bit about what your experience has been from a provider standpoint and as someone that has been helping a lot of people. And I know one of the things that I was really excited about seeing on your page was how you were giving Uh, different things to look out for from a dance perspective. So Mm -hmm. could you shed a little bit more light on what you've been seeing and how you've been helping? Yeah, it's been so different, but so interesting and enlightening and seeing like, how are these new ways that we can help? Because I'm in orthopedics. So that's like your elbow injuries, your hip injuries, your knee injuries, your back injuries, things like that. So initially... I'm in physical therapy too. So physical therapy, it was illegal to do telehealth eight weeks ago. Wow. It was not allowed by, I don't think any state, for sure not the state of Minnesota where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And when businesses started closing down and saying people can't come in the doors, you know, a lot of legislation changed. Yeah. And it was really interesting to see that repealed almost overnight. So. I've been doing Zoom visits. Now, luckily, I had a personal training background prior to that. And I was like, oh, Zoom, got that. No problem, can do that. But for a lot of providers, they're like, what do you mean? We're providing medical services over Zoom. It was this big, scary territory. Yeah. Um, But it's been really cool, too, because in the state of Minnesota, and I think every other state as well, you're licensed to your state. You may not Mm -hmm. cross state boundaries. So it has opened... Pandora's box of being able to help people that could not get help normally. I have people out in North Dakota saying, Hey, can you help me? And they've asked before. And I had to say, No, I'm sorry, we're not approved for telehealth. I realize I am a six hour drive away, not going to happen. So it's really taken down a lot of the barriers that we had to serving people as well. And I am seeing people in clinic. It's just, There are some guidelines. Like if people have been traveling, it's a no-go. If people have been exposed to people with a fever, that's a no-go. Right. If signs and symptoms, that is a definite no-go. And then we have these fun little masks that adhere to our faces so that you can never understand (laughs) us. Um, But, you know, it it is what it is. And we're trying to do the best we can to serve and still protect people at the same time. I love it. I... It's, It's funny because that has been a big topic of conversation even at work for me and, you know, a lot of the healthcare CEOs and and folks at the hospital are trying to figure out what's going to be our new normal, especially in Maryland, we're going to start lifting a lot of those travel restrictions and access to care restrictions starting this week. Mm -hmm. So they're all just like, wait, to your point, we've opened up all of this telehealth opportunity and, We've seen that we've been able to see a lot more patients lately. What do we do now? So it's it's really cool being in my position from a healthcare administration and policy perspective to see how that's all unfolding too. So it's it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that changes in the next couple of weeks. It will be. And we just opened our ORs last week. So it's been really weird to see, (laughs) we're in Minnesota, we get snow, it's cold here, but Mm -hmm. we have tents in the parking lot 
Oh. And there's the, um, I don't know a lot about the frontline screening, but there's the, you know, the new swab fast reaction test. Yeah. And if you're screened in the parking lot and that comes up positive, you're not coming into the building. Nope. So it's like, whoa, what just happened? There's a tent in the parking lot with a line of cars going through <laughs> it with a swab. <laughs> yes. Yes. So familiar with that. It's, it's definitely been interesting. And, and my parents are also in New Hampshire. And this weekend, like there's this huge cold front that's about to hit them. And I always joke with him and say, the summertime does not come to that area until August. So I love you, but I'm not coming to visit. (laughs) Same here. I don't think you would love Minnesota this time of year if you're not looking for snow. (laughs) <laughs> no, I did a research program there and it was in the summertime. And I remember walking through the tunnels yeah. at the University of Minnesota. I'm like, why do you have this? And they're like, oh, I <laughs> like, yeah, no, not staying. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm not used to it either. <laughs> it's, 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 it's cool, but scary, but all the things that like, there's just, it's changing what we think of as normal. Mm -hmm. So with that, how are you managing your life right now? I know you said you've been seeing some patients in clinic and some things are virtual, but how is it all working for you from a personal perspective? Yeah, it's strangely, it has never been busier. Um, So today, technically it's a day off and I go, hey, I got five Zooms. I had to write them on my whiteboard and remember which one goes where. And my significant other, he's like, how in the world do you accumulate five Zooms in one day? So it's been wonderful to have technology and it has opened just all kinds of new people to meet and connections and just ways to collaborate and help people that people were so busy in their own lives before going to, you know, dragging their kids to sports and this and that and the other thing and so overbooked that maybe they want it to have other connections, but there just wasn't the time or the space. And mm-hmm. now a lot of people have the time, they have the space and they see connection. Yes. So it's everything from going, okay, let's do this course on TRXs and then renew this cert and then jump on this call and jump on that podcast and then go help this team out with that thing that we're in different states. So otherwise we wouldn't have even had time to connect. So it's been really fun, but I also have to be careful with my own energy and make sure that I'm not spreading it too thin between managing a full caseload of patients. Cause we are, we're running at hundred percent efficiency right now, which we normally don't Ooh. run at hundred percent efficiency. <laughs> normally we run at 80% efficiency. <laughs> normally there's cancels and no shows and reschedules. And right now everybody's like, Nope, we're coming in. We'll be there, but we're not going to no show. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's um, <laughs> yeah. And then I've been able to take, you know, some different ballet classes and things like that myself. And sometimes in my own community, and sometimes I'll say, you know, what's on YouTube? And I'm out there taking with the Danish ballet and going, huh, I never realized that they do 32 calf raises on one leg. Oh my, <laughs> that, that, that wasn't in my practice. So now that's in their practice. So it's been interesting to see internationally what are some of the practices that are their best practices or their norms that had never crossed my mind. So really enlightening. Yes, I absolutely love this. And one of my coworkers, actually, I think for work, what I did is I created a wellness channel within like our Microsoft teams. And I try very hard to post like, Hey guys, here's a healthy recipe that you can do at home. What are you guys doing? And we started talking about audiobooks. And Mm -hmm. I love to read. And my one coworker was like, shouldn't you have a library card? Like, don't you have that? And I was like, oh, snap. I forgot. (laughs) So I have like been on my public library site, just, you know, getting all the books and all the eBooks and reading. And it's just so crazy how I, how much I realized I missed that. Mm-hmm. And I could literally go through like five, two to three hundred page books in like a week. And oh, you're a speed reader. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're fast. <laughs> I have so much to learn. Let me take all of this in. But mm-hmm. I just, it's been a good time. But even, even with that, as you said, you have to protect yourself and watch your energy. So 
from your perspective, could you tell us some of the ways that you've been able to just practice that self-care and make sure you're not overextending yourself, especially as things start to open up again? Yeah, for sure. That um, at first, when things start closing down, it's like, oh, I could do this soon and I can learn that and I could stay up all night doing this and I could do that. Um, it definitely, then I crashed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I even going to get up tomorrow and serve people? Like I am adhered to my bed like glue. And I was like, oh crud. Um, so it took that little momentary crash to go, what am I going to do? And the first thing I said is bedtime still has to be bedtime. Yep. And it needs to be a reasonably regular time every single night. The alarm clock in the morning is going to go off at the exact exact same time every day. And I'm not going to hit snooze. I'm not going to roll over. I'm not going to skip stuff. Get up. So had to make the evening routine and the morning routine set in stone and say, it doesn't matter what else is fun and interesting and fantastic in this world. It's a timeout. That's the recharge. And a lot of that came back to that recharge. The next thing I looked at is my workouts. And I said, okay, I can't go to the studio. That's not going to happen. I can't go to the gym. That's not going to happen. But it doesn't mean I can't work out in my home. So I set aside my normal workout time that I would have had every single day. And I say, this is my 45 minutes. And I'm going to work out. And if I can't, maybe I can't find the motivation because it's a little weird when you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. So at least I'll go for a walk. Like I will be active for this 45 minutes. And on Saturday, I will take a ballet class. And if something happens to my ballet class, I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to find a backup ballet class. And on Sunday, I will do yoga. And if I can't find my yoga class, I will go find another thing on YouTube and just be open-minded about what happens next. So I think those are the big ones for me. Like, Nighttime routine, morning routine. This is the 45 minutes we do every day. This is the ballet. This is the yoga. And just make that the foundation that everything else comes off of. And same with the work schedule. Like, yeah, we're 100% efficient. So there's not a lot of recovery and recharge time in that day. Mm -hmm. But I had started taking on extra patients because we were over 100% capacity. I was like, oh, I'll just volunteer and come in a little early. I see you a little late. Did that for about two weeks and burned myself out. So I was like, okay, it's it's going to have to stay within the boundaries of this is when we open and this is when we close and I'll be here and I'll be on 100%, but we have to stay with the schedule. Like I can't come in early and volunteer my time for you. Yes. I, so that was hard. Yes. That was hard being a giver. Listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're in the same boat. You're like being a giver. You're just like, you just want to keep giving. And then you realize like, then you run out of your own capacity And that capacity is needed to bring to bring meaningful connection forward in those we serve. I 130 percent agree. And it's it's funny that you mentioned that because when we first started, it was so easy to just be like, oh, la la la, I'm just going to be on my laptop. And what I found is that I was on at seven o'clock in the morning and I wasn't getting offline until seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. And I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. Like, Mm -hmm. I understand with everything going on with the pandemic, I have a lot to do from a work perspective, but I also have people that I want to serve outside of work. But most importantly, I have to make sure I'm taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that insomnia creeping in and me being on my devices late at night. And I'm like, okay, phone, you're going back in the living room. I'm going to have that noisy alarm clock right next to me. The end. Like that's what's going to wake me up in the morning and I have to get up. Yeah. So same here. I literally had to set a night alarm on my phone. And when the night alarm goes off, that means that the phone goes in the drawer and the phone doesn't come back out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. I even have a bedtime reminder on my iPad in case I'm reading and I'm like, oh no, I'll just slip in another five pages. And it goes off at 830. It's like, nope, your bedtime. Get it together. Yep. (laughs) So that is like non-negotiable. And I really want to ask you from a perspective of just understanding how the body works 
So many of us are at home. We're having our Netflix binges. We're sitting a lot. And again, we're going to have to get back into that normal. I'm going outside routine as restrictions lift. What are some of your best practices or tips that you could give for folks that are just trying to get used to having additional mobility? Because, you know, I think about joint pain and all folks that, you know, may be suffering with that, especially right now because we're sitting so much. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of that. People are telling me usually it's back and hip pain, but there's definitely other pains too, necks and headaches. and when we take a deep dive, which I take a deep dive with everybody, I'm like, walk me through your day. Tell me like, what are your activities like? Because it feeds into their injuries and their aches and their pains and their abilities. And 99% of the time right now, it's coming down to kind of one of three things. Either I'm sitting all day long and just all kinds of things kind of creep up out of that one. Mm -hmm. So with my sitters, I say, Every hour, top of the hour, you see the 11 o'clock come, you see the 12 o'clock come, you see the one o'clock come. You have to get up, walk a certain number of steps around your home. A lot of people have uh, trackers and it kind of depends on the person. Yeah. So, you know, for my older adults, I could barely make it across the room. I say, okay, your goal is to get across the room once. For my super active athletes that are now couch potatoes, I'm like, go outside, walk for two miles come back <laughs> exactly. or, or you're taking three 20 minute walks today. For those that are more mobile, I say you're taking three 20 minute jogs today. And most of them, most of us are able to do a little bit of something and do it three times a day. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's so good. <laughs> Especially because, you know, you think about the 10,000 steps and you know, people that are wearing like the wearable technology, you know, you start to feel bad and you're like, oh, I'm not moving. I'm not doing this. Like I was talking to my dad the other day and he's out walking in the forest at nine o'clock at night. And he's like, you know, I, I can't, I can't really get up and move around like I want to during the day, but at least I can do this. And he's like, oh, and by the way, I deleted you from my tracker because you were making me feel bad. And I was like, Aww. what? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sad. Sad. He's like, you know, it's great. You're really active. I'm really proud of you, but I don't want to see what you finish your move ring. Yeah. But it's, it's cool though, because he was like, yeah, but I think about you and I know how sweet you are. You would say, you know what, dad, it's okay. You're doing your best. So he's like, the least I can do is get up and walk. I'm like, I'm glad I could encourage you in that weird way, I think. I think. Yeah, yeah, it, it's hard, especially with the parents and older adults to to see, like, what their perspective is. And they obviously have to be a little bit more community uh, contact conscious than, I, I should say everybody should be, but just because, you know, they have a little higher risk. Yes, for sure. And one of the things that I have tried very hard to do is just not be so hard on myself. If one day, like I can't get out and I can't move around, like at least I'm doing yoga at night, right before I go to bed, just to allow myself to really and truly relax. And one of the questions that I have for you is when you think about This is our day to day. This is what we're focused on just in the moment. It's not a forever thing. What are some tips that you can give people in terms of just this is how you take care of yourself for today from a movement perspective? Absolutely. I'd say the first thing is find something you enjoy. And if you don't enjoy anything, well, at least find something you don't mind doing. Mm -hmm. So if walking isn't your thing, okay, try something else. Go on, I hate to say go on YouTube, but just start with beginner yoga, Mm -hmm. beginner Pilates, beginner bar, beginner home conditioning, yeah, beginner chair conditioning. So try to find something that would resonate with what might be in your head. Like just close your eyes and think of what would I enjoy doing movement wise? 
Mm-hmm. And then is that accessible to me? So for example, if you love spinning class, you're like, the last thing I want to do is go buy a spinning bike. Well, what if you have a bike in the garage and you could put it on a trainer? Like, would that be legitimate? Could you go on Amazon and order a trainer and put your bike on the trainer? Um, Cause that way you could do spinning class, turn on some good jams and just start cranking it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are a lot of alternatives. A lot of people think, especially because I compete in extreme fitness, bodybuilding. They're like, you must have a crazy fancy home gym. And I'm like, no, I live in a small townhouse. I have three sets of dumbbells and a pull-up bar. That is what I own. And it is plenty to get tons of body weight exercises done. So if you need ideas, I mean, I have lots of stuff on Facebook and whatnot and YouTube and Instagram. Sure, follow, follow me and you can find some stuff, but look out there for other ideas too. And feel free to modify it. I think sometimes people look at other movers and they think I have to do it that way. And especially coming from a dance background, we're really ingrained and I have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. You do you like, it's okay. If your interpretation of whatever you see, looks nothing like that, but at least you're feeling inspired to move. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That was perfect. And one of the things that I often see too is, and I just had someone email me the other day. I thought this was absolutely cute. And Kelsey, I'm giving you a shout out right now, but like she likes to do Pilates and she'll try to have her son join. And she's like, he's just crawling over my back and blah, 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 blah. But what I think that's absolutely adorable. But if you're someone that does have children at home, even if they're small, even if they're teenagers, What are some of the ways that you think could get like families moving together? Because I I think we overcomplicate things too much and we we try to do all the things, but it's really just go for a walk together. Yeah. So, so many times with families, I see like mom or dad's trying to do some workout video and then the kids like crawling all over them and then they're getting annoyed. Well, kids look to us as role models. So if we encourage them to try it, or if we encourage them, I love encouraging kids to name the movements. Mm. I'm like, can you do this? What would you call that movement? And also respecting that kids don't interact with workout equipment in regular workout ways. They will build obstacle courses. (laughs) And if you can just give them like four or five safe things to go play with in the corner, And it doesn't have to be fancy workout equipment. It could be like a jug of water you bought at the gas station. They will build an obstacle course and work out while you do your workout. If you're like, this is workout time. Why don't you see what you can build? And then kind of touch base with them. They are so much more invested in the idea of purposeful movement, which for them is play. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. When you when you said that, I thought about um, there was a girl that I saw in the gym and she was working out with her daughter and she was so cute. She came in with her little workout outfit. She had on a sports bra and her little tights and her like pull up was all like bunched in the in the pants. And I'm like, this is this is. I don't even want to work out. I just want to watch. And she Aww, did, so cute such confidence. Uh, and I'm like, you go. Kid. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch in a non creepy way, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, and, like little kids will lead workouts too if you let them. Yeah. You give them if you give them just enough ideas or flashcards, or they'll go play fifty two pick up if you throw your deck of cards on the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. And even with my niece, that I think she knows that I'm the only one that will run around with her. And when she was smaller, she's really tall for her age, but I would like not toss her, but like put her in the air. Cause in my head, I'm like, Ooh, this is a way to do a bicep curl or a <laughs> yeah. press. And you know, I'm like working with her and then I come down in the squat, but in the process of me lifting her, she's like, I'm flying. I'm like, great. Just don't move too hard, too fast. <laughs> it will be fine. But yeah, no, we turn we turn kids into airplanes a lot. Um, yes. And I think as adults, sometimes, I don't know why, but it's almost like either we forgot how to play or we're afraid to play. Mm-hmm. And especially when kids are in daycare and you don't actually see them all day other than getting them ready. 
So it's okay to play and it's okay to let your kid lead. Like what is that play event for us today? Or maybe we can't play volleyball in the house, but could we get a balloon and play balloon volleyball in the house? We could probably do that. <laughs> I, I have done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not even going to lie. And that that's something that I emphasize is food, fitness, and fun. And, you know, all of the kids in my family know that when Ebony is around, we will get our silly fix. And it's just so cool to me. And even when I go to different events and kids are there, I end up like rolling around on the ground with the kids and like dancing. Yes. With them. <laughs> and, you know, people stare at me and I'm like, that's totally fine. But I'm having a really good time, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's okay. It's okay to roll. It's okay to crawl. And I don't know why adults sometimes like either forgot or have, have fear that maybe other people are judging them if they're rolling around crawling around the gym just because it's not your most traditional movement Mm -hmm. but if we go back that's called primal movement and that's a whole nother topic if anybody wants to do primal movement just go on youtube and look up primal movement workout and you will be shocked what you find um Mm -hmm. like good stuff good movements that you just you probably didn't do them in the gym because you're afraid of people judging you but why not do them in your house Mm mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I definitely do that. And even just from a a movement perspective, like, again, going back to like the little ones, my family has this weird, I mean, personally, I don't like to walk around bare feet, but I know that it's good for you. And I do it anyway. I just have to make sure I sweep (laughs) and vacuum first. (laughs) Know how that goes. I got three cats. So there's a little fur out there. (laughs) So it's, it's really important to me, especially based upon like all the research I've read just about like that development and just allowing your body to understand where it is in space and how to move and how to get strong and all these things. And, you know, my brother would look at me like I was crazy when he would come to pick up my nephew because he's like barefoot, no diaper on, and we're just running around and crawling. And he's like, what are you doing with my child? Okay. <laughs> And I will like hand him like, here's all the research I found for you. He's like, I'm not reading that, but you're onto something. Keep going. Yeah, that, that's been the, that has been the craziest thing on Zoom. It's like when toddlers wake up from naps, what's the first thing they do? They cry. The second thing they do is they strip. And I'm like, well, okay, well, and by now I'm just flat out used to it. All right. <laughs> yes. And like, even to this day, like. My nephew has like this whole nudist thing going on. He's like, but I'm clean. I don't understand. Why are you, why are you trying to not let me live my best life? I'm like, dude, because you're 11 now. And that's just not <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, you could just go in the other room. This is- I'm I'd like, be like, yep. Room. I'd be like, yep, I'm going, I'm going to the other room. See ya. <laughs> I, just, I just can't. I, I can't. But anyway. Could you tell us, where does Meredith hang out? What are you up to? What are you doing? Like, I want to make sure that people can and will connect with you so that they can see all the wonderful things that you're doing. Yeah, quite honestly, I hang out a lot on Instagram. And I will admit, a year ago, if you asked me when Instagram was, I was like, what are you talking about? (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I've discovered it's kind of a cool way, especially if you want to share you know, health, wellness, fitness, nutrition, mindset, workouts, yoga. Um, I do a ton of yoga, a ton of Pilates, ton of stuff like that. And just help people out. I put so many answers to questions on there when people are like, what's a great exercise to work my scapula? And I'm like, okay, well, that just inspired my next post that I will make, especially dedicated to you, but probably good for the whole world right now. Yes. So um, Instagram has been, it's become a new favorite for me. And I do answer messages on there. And I put stuff out too and respond to you. So that one is Dr. Meredith Butelitz. It's D-R dot M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H. And my last name all strung in there, B-U-T-U-L-I-S. So it's not some fancy code name. It is just flat out my name. But you want the one with the doctor in front of it because there was an old account. Those are some of my initials, but I don't actually use that account. So you probably don't want the old one. Um, and then, then uh, Facebook. Um, Facebook is a great place to find me as well. I'm under Meredith Butelis, so my first name, my last name. And we actually, my uh, significant other and I just started a new, just a group. It's a free group. It's mostly based on, well, it's called um, Fitness, Focus, and Fuel. So it's based off of 
some workout things. And we tend to get a little technical with our background. So it's like, I don't just want people doing a squat. I want them really understanding how to do a squat without hurting themselves. So it's like, we'll work out, but there's maybe a little bit more of the technical cueing underneath the workout. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we talk about, you know, focus, which is your mindset and fuel, uh, basic nutrition that could help a whole lot of people. Um, So if people want to join a free group, that's called fitness focus and fuel. It's just, it's out there. It's a community and it's our first time coming together publicly and saying, Hey, we're just putting stuff out for you guys. You ask questions. We'll answer those too. (laughs) Yes. I love it. And I think that's just so cool that you're doing that. And I, I love the technical thing. So I'm always just like, Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that joint movement. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's real nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We, we try to keep it. Yes. It's movement. Yes. It's fun. Yes. It's upbeat. Yes. There's music, but let's have just that little educational moment hiding in there too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. It has been such a treat having you on the show. And guys, don't forget, I will have all of the information for Meredith linked in the show notes. And it's, it's, it's just been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me share with your audience. I'm glad to share today and I hope everybody stays healthy and well and you know, I'm happy to reach out to you and bounce ideas around with anybody that wants, really. Awesome. Okay, Thyroid Warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, be great, reflect on your triumphs, and as always, be well. Take care. <laughs>